Welcome to the Focal Point. I think I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Mullins here, and he's going to announce a little bit about the band. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll start by saying that I met Joey probably close on 15 years ago, and um, he was an up-and-coming piper at the time, and the last 15 years he's just gone from up-and-coming to the top of his game. He's won some amazing uh, uh, competitions over in Ireland for piping and uh, done a lot of work over there as well. So um, I know Joey well. I don't know Nathan quite as well, but I do know that the two of them have turned out some beautiful CDs and have been playing music together for at least 10 years, if not more, and, and uh, which is, was helped a little bit, I suppose, by the fact that they shared a house. Um, they have some great CDs out, which I highly recommend as, as the, for sale in the back. Um, and um, I know that they, one of the things that they've always been interested in is digging out some old recordings from some of the Ward Archive recordings of uh, things that were made back in the 20s and early part of the uh, 20th century um, and resurrecting some of those and he's done a great job with those kinds of things. Both of them have. Uh, they're joined tonight by uh, David McKinley Ward, who is a lovely guitar player and a companyist. And um, I think anything else I say is superfluous. I let them let the music do the talking. So please give them a warm welcome.
thanks very much. It's very happy to be back here in St. Louis, and especially at one of my favorite venues to play, Focal Point. Um, thank you guys so much for all your hospitality and uh, giving us a shot. Really appreciate it. <laughs> um, we have David McKinley Ward over here backing us, and he's going to sing a couple songs. The Nathan Gorley on the fiddle, and um, Badge of the Bone. We're going to play that later. Yeah. <laughs> we have to kind of get out of McGurk's mode. Played the Rattlin' Bog about 400 times this week. <laughs> so anyway, um, those are a couple jigs, uh, kind of eccentric jigs, actually. Um, the first one's called A Taylor I Am, which is a version of uh, a more common tune uh, called uh, Tell Her I Am. Um, it kind of goes, just goes to show you that um, in an oral tradition, when you're in a loud bar, people are yelling the names across. Sometimes the game of telephone can get um, mixed up. Um, the second one's called The Shoemaker's Fancy, and I learned that from Nathan. He learned it from a couple of friends of his in Ireland, Mairead Hurley and uh, John Blake. And then the third one is um, called Billy Rush's Own. Nathan also brought this one to me, and it's an older version of uh, The Lark in the Morning. You know a tune's really old when there's about 400 versions of it, and The Lark in the Morning is uh, no exception. We're gonna continue on with a couple of reels. The first one's called Limestone Rock, really popular, nice G uh, reel. And the second one is called uh, The Old Ash Plant. And uh, I would have got this from uh, the great whistle player from Claire, from Doolin County Claire, Michael Russell. Uh, and uh, the third one is called Within a Mile of Dublin. So hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, thanks a lot. I think it's time. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing out there? We've had a, uh, how, did any of you come to McGurk's while we were here? <laughs> better, better for it, probably. <laughs> we, had a, we had a really challenging but tremendous time. It's always a complicated experience, but always one that we're I, I should say I'm always very grateful for it. Between between these two institutions, you know, there's a, it's a really makes a big difference for working musicians trying to put it all together. So we went to the baseball game last night, and the guys behind us were bachelor party from Oklahoma City, and they're like, we went and heard the most amazing band. Oh ever. yeah! And I was like, we were at Burger's last night, and I told them that that makes you guys were unbelievable. And I go, what time are you guys there? They go, eleven. <laughs> well, it's always our goal to be able to appeal to the bachelor party and to the small kid party. You know? <laughs> We're trying to have the crossover appeal. I know, you missed so much. We're trying to have the crossover appeal. Yeah. Well, anyway, we're very, we're, we're very grateful to be here. I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I'm going to do a song here that is uh, of the murder ballad canon. I learned this song, first heard it from uh, Johnny Moynihan playing with De Dan. And um, interesting, when we, the, the story of the song is just one where two people are in love and then inexplicably he murders his uh, wife, which is kind of how they generally go. You don't usually get a good reason, it just kind of happens in his eye. But it's called The Banks of Red Roses. And during the during the pandemic, I I started working on this. Um, I'm a big fan of Nick Jones. I don't know if people know Nick Jones out there, but I started to work on his. Uh, he had this very distinct percussive uh, fingerstyle guitar approach, uh, and so I've been kind of trying to figure out how to fit this stuff into music these days. And so some early stages uh, reconnaissance. So we're figuring it out. Walk 
talked and they talked till they came into a cave where all day long our Johnny he'd been digging up a grave when all the live long day he'd been digging up a grave for the lever lying there among the roses David McKinley Ward, ladies and gentlemen. Very fun. Very happy that David moved up uh, to Boston from Baltimore uh, recently. <laughs> Someone from Baltimore in the house. <laughs> I also love Baltimore. Me too. It is dear to my heart. But right now you're living in Boston. That's true. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun to, uh, I, you know, like Nathan and I played a lot together in our 20s and um, speaking of that, about the pandemic and everything, it's a lot has happened. So I have two kids now and you know, uh, we don't get to play that often. So this has kind of been a, a musical vacation for me and we never get to sit on a stage with a sound system like this and play for people that really enjoy it. So uh, just happy to be here. Uh, a couple more pipes we're gonna continue on with. The first one is called uh, Kit O'Mahanis and um, the second one is called uh, Kill Their Fancy Day. Both were kind of recorded in the uh, early 20th century in America. A lot of Irish music, the, uh, some of the first commercial recordings or the first commercial recordings of Irish music were made in America. Um, there's infrastructure and um, communities where you can be a full-time musician recording and performing. Um, the first one, the, the name comes from uh, Chief O'Neill's book, his collection in Chicago. And, and uh, I think that was, he named it after his mother, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of these tunes, like we were talking about the oral tradition and everything. Sometimes we didn't have names for stuff, so then people would just kind of, if you had to put it in a collection, it has to be named. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of people in Chicago at the time, Mayor Harrison, Mayor Harrison's fedora, which is another reel, was the mayor of the, of the Chicago at the time. He wore a big, wide-brimmed hat. Um, the second one, The Killer Fancy, was uh, recorded by a number of people, including Patsy Tui, which is a great vaudeville piper of the early 20th century. So, anyway, hope you like them. <laughs> Thank you. 
So um, we're going to continue on with some reels now. I hope you like the sound of my voice, because we have an hour and a half left. We're going through a journey together about Irish music. Um, the first one's called the uh, Johnny Henry's. Johnny Henry was a fiddler from the Mayo Sligo border, and he was uh, the brother of Kevin Henry, Chicago legend, piper, storyteller, and recitator. Um, I got to meet Kevin years ago, um, Sean Gavin, my buddy at Living Chicago, took me over to his house and it was a life-changing experience. Um, I was very happy that I got to meet him before he passed. Um, the second one is called The, uh, the Boys on the Hilltop and it's a, it's a great tune. Um, the third one is called Arkle Mountain and it's actually one of the only newly, newly er composed tunes that we recorded on our first record. Do you remember that guy's name? That a banjo player from Ireland wrote the last one. <laughs> There's only about seven, so you can yeah. narrow it down pretty easily. They are, they are the sleep notes of our uh, album, which we did bring a couple of. <laughs> oh yeah, we thought we didn't have any more, and then Nathan found someone, uh, some under his bed. So there's about three or four more uh, CDs back there, and uh, help us keep the weight down on the suitcase on the way back, okay? Here we go. Thank you. 
Uh, and it, it just came out this March and uh, it's a lot of music that I was kind of playing in the pandemic and I was going through a lot of old uh, collections of tunes and um, the, the record's called The King of the Blind which is an old harping piece um, from the 14th century and uh, the Neil collection was the first collection of Irish music ever made by two brothers in Dublin um, that's not entirely true they were the first Irish people to make a collection of tunes. There were people from the continent of Europe coming over and taking <laughs> before the, they, they, they got there organized and, and did a nice um, uh, collection of tunes. And a lot of this was from the harp music, uh, some that was collected from the Belfast Harp Festival um, that happened in uh, the 1800s. But uh, I might play one, one of these pieces that I got. Um, it's different. A lot of, it's very different than most of the music that we're playing tonight, and it's very old um, music, so I'll give it a shot. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. That one's called The Fairy Queen, and there's a couple different versions of it, and some people accredit it, accredit it to Trilocco Carolyn, um, but it's, it's hard when the history is kind of cut and burned over and over again, but, you know, uh, so they don't really know for sure, but, um, yeah, it's a special tune to me because my wife Jacqueline walked down the aisle to that tune, so. Um, funny thing, I, I actually released the, the record also on vinyl because I said, how do I not, how do I make something and have people not buy it? So I said, I'm gonna do a solo Illum Pipe record. That's the first thing. And I said, how do we trim that down even further? Let's release it on vinyl. So I have a couple back there if anybody wants it. Um, anyway, what do we continue with now? Cool. Speaking of old heart marches, um, <laughs> this march, uh, it's like a triple meter march, like a jig. And it comes from uh, the harping tradition again but also the, the big pipes in Ireland, with the Brian Brew pipes, the war pipes, as we call them. And um, this, this march is from a, a bigger piece of music uh, called a descriptive piece, which are closer to kind of sweets um, before people were doing social dancing in Ireland. And um, it's, it, it kind of has sound effects and different parts, and you'd be enjoying your uh, nagging of ale in, in a, some pub somewhere in the 1800s or 1700s and a harp player would bash in <laughs> and then start <laughs> playing one of these descriptive pieces. Uh, the, the most famous ones is called the Fox Chase and um, the Marshall Alistrum, it's about, uh, you know, um, a fight uh, again of Alistair, it's called Marshall Alistrum, fighting against uh, in, in, Jack in the Jacobite Wars. And in, in Irish it's called, um, it's known as the Lament for the Women in Slaughter which doesn't sound that nice in English, <laughs> but it, sound, it sounds nice, nicer in Irish. And um, yeah, it basically has a march, battle sounds, and then on the eve of the last day of the battle, someone poisons Alistair and murders him. And he was like the guy that everybody rallied behind. So the army was basically, the morale was gone. And um, there was three heirs at the end of this. It's a very big piece of music. But this is the march from it anyway, and then the second one is called the march from March of the King of Leash. Oof. <laughs> Thank you. 
more uh, set of tunes, and then we're going to let everybody stretch their legs for a little while. Um, they're dance tunes from the Cork and Kerry region of Ireland um, called Slides, and um, they have a beautiful uh, style of fiddle playing and accordion playing there. Um, not very imaginative with the tune names. So the first one is called Park O'Keefe's, the second one's Park O'Keefe's, and the third one is Park O'Keefe's. So hope you enjoy them, and we'll take a little bit of a break and give, give my arms a rest. Thank you. Take a quick break. Be back here in a second. Okay. Thanks a lot. Welcome back, everybody. I will turn it over now to the guys. Thank you. to text something and it came out tree t-r-e amadans instead of three madmans 
Or Mad Men. <laughs> and then he made a poster out of it. <laughs> yeah, it was my friend. Okay. I think one of the names was Cicada Apocalypse. <laughs> Break short, but Nathan and I were, we need to catch a flight at 7.30 and back home to Boston. So I was saying, oh, God, we gotta keep it short, we gotta keep it short, and then now it's delayed, so. <laughs> we're doing okay. We're gonna play some reels to open the, the second half up. The first one is called, um, how do you say it, Nathan? Uh, it's Coleman's Gratspe. It's uh, Michael Coleman. Uh, his version of the Graspe, which is he recorded back in the 1940s, and it's uh, one of the best recordings of all time of Irish music. It's one of my favorite tunes ever, too. What's the second one? <laughs> the Leitrim Thrush, I think, is the second one. Couple reels. <laughs> Johnston's, uh, this, which <laughs> I could have swore was a traditional tune, um, but we were trying to track it down to do the liner notes like six years ago, and it turns out that it's a real, right? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to find 
forgetting, I'm forgetting who, there's a, because of, this melody dates back to uh, it, the ancient days, but there's somebody else composed a reel that is very similar, and then I think Dervish turned it into a mazurka. Sounds exactly like we're, what we're about to play. So a mazurka hop jig reel. <laughs> Um, called Mrs. Johnson's, and the second one is called uh, The Tipperary Hills, and the third one is called Cook and Andy. And uh, Cook and Andy is a great song um, that's kind of like, it's mouth music mixed with uh, funny lyrics. And uh, the um, Nathan and I were playing a bagpipe festival in, uh, in West Virginia years ago called Squeeze the Bag. It's not my I didn't name it, and uh, it was funny because it was all these pipers and their families in a theater about this size, and in the the lyrics of the song is, uh, pipers sell your pipes, buy your wife a gown, and then the next part of it is, I wouldn't buy, sorry, I wouldn't sell my pipes for all the wives in town, so everybody laughed and then got elbowed <laughs> right after, um, so anyway. Place to play. Um, it 
so nice to play for a bunch of people listening in a quiet room. <laughs> Such a treat. Uh, I, I prefer McGurk's actually, honestly. <laughs> I prefer the blood coming out of my ears. I do love McGurk's. Um, also, but uh, so I'll play, we'll give Joey a little break here and I'll play a few fiddle tunes. Um, I'm trying to remember names for these and I got almost nothing. The second one is the Antrim Rose, which is a uh, creation of Patty O'Brien's. Uh, Patty was a bit of a mentor to me, a, a large mentor to me in the Twin Cities. I moved there um, back in 2005, I think, and he kind of took me under his wing and told me uh, what not to do, <laughs> which was lots of things. <laughs> What notes not to play. Um, and he'd always, even though we were worked, working on three different projects at the same time and uh, practicing like many nights of the week together, uh, when he called me, he would still leave messages that would go, Hello, Nathan, this is Patty O'Brien, the button accordion player. <laughs> um, so the, the second one's the Antrim Rose, and then a third one I associate very strongly with Laura Pedersen. Um, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends in, in Boston, that's a <laughs> great fiddle player. <laughs> I was going to say my best fiddle friend, uh, and then, yeah, thanks, <laughs> nailed it. Um, and then I'll play another one before that, too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nathan Gorley. Was that time again? Yes, it is. All right. It's song time. Everybody, everybody can go to sleep. Uh, this is a song that I learned from and where I believe everybody learned from, uh, Tim O'Brien. He, uh, everybody knows Tim O'Brien, right? Okay. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's just one, it's been one of my favorite songs for a very long time. And, uh, it's beautiful, lush arrangement of him playing on fiddle with Edgar Meyer on bass, bowing the bass. And it's just this beautiful, um, arrangement. And I, uh, just a couple months ago, Again, in this kind of Nick Jones frame of mind that I've been in for a while, um, this kind of adaption of the song popped up. And uh, it's called Foreign Lander. I've been a foreign lander, I've 
fired the cannon gun And it's among those brave commanders That I have come undone For I have returned back home again A bitter and broken man Now my dear is true with me she will not stand Thanks very much. Very happy to do some songs with Dave. We just put that together yesterday, and he's so good that we could be not knowing what we're doing, and it makes us sound good. So, good job, Dave. Okay. We're going to do some uh, Duval Meter Marches now for you. Um, the first one is a song, uh, kind of a song march called Bonnie Prince Charlie. Um, he had a lot of names. Uh, the, the Great Pretender, uh, the Blackbird, um, lots of stuff like that. And uh, he was the last Catholic King of Scotland. So that was a big deal at the time. And um, yeah, so th we got this tune from a great uh, harmonica player in New York City named Don Mead. He is a, a historian and great wealth of information. Usually when people are making their CDs, they call him to get the info about the tunes because he just has uh, researched so much about the, the music. The second one is called Return to Fingal, and I, I got it uh, from a, uh, the, the legendary Seamus Ennis um, from his record, The Return to Fingal. So, hope you like them. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Um, we're gonna do some jigs now. Uh, the first one is called the Gaelic Club, um, and uh, the second one is called the New the Banks of Newfoundland, and the last one is a great old favorite called the Luck on the Strand. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>
Uh, we're, we, normally we write down the set list and we have about 14 things to fit into 10 minutes. <laughs> and then I talk for about 40 <laughs> So we end up cutting everything off. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to spare you that this time. Um, we're going to continue on with a, a, a mixed set of tunes. Um, usually what the deal is is you put three tunes in the same meter in Irish music usually. It's very uncommon. Um, but we did one of these uh, kind of mixed uh, meter sets on our other record and we really enjoyed it. And these are three tunes that really didn't fit with any other tune. So we thought that we would um, try this. The first one is called, um, what, what is the name we got it. Well, this is another uh, from the Patio O'Brien's tune collections. He has three different collections of 500 tunes each. Um, <laughs> and so this one's The Siege of King Cam. No repeats. <laughs> there, don't tell him, but there are a couple repeats. <laughs> but they have different names. That is true. Um, the Siege of Gungamp, and then the second one is an air um, that Nathan got from uh, uh, Peter Carberry. Is that right? Um, and the third one is a uh, is a reel that's very common uh, called the Road to List and Varna. But um, what I found a, a, the, a really old version of it that's almost like a walking march and it had a couple different parts. So I took one of the parts off that, um, the third part of it, and I put it on to the end of the regular two part. So, um, yeah, we'll try these for you.
Davis. Uh, a lot of people think that it was written by Turlock or Carolyn, but he wasn't the only guy in town or in Ireland during the Baroque era. <laughs> um, There's a lot of blind uh, harpers that were touring and doing the same thing he was, and he wrote this Planksty. Um, it's kind of in a uh, march meter, and um, it's a beautiful old tune. It made its way into uh, championship Irish dancing uh, as a set dance. Um, yeah, and um, I think Dave's gonna start us. No, do you want to play it? Do you want a banjo for another twenty minutes? Or no. Okay. okay. <laughs> no time, Nathan says. So we're gonna march on with this. You, you guys have been great. Thank you so much for coming out on this surface of the sun type of day. <laughs> oh my gosh! And uh, we'll see it. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Thanks. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you.